So welcome back to another video. Now I've been banished to this cupboard because I made a pretty big mistake in the last video. So the previous video was around an eco house that was spending a thousand pounds a month on energy. And in that video, people were pointing out that I made some pretty big errors around the air source heat pump. Now there was lots of comments left on the channel about this error and also some other concerns to do with this air source heat pump. So what I'm gonna do now is check out some of the comments, give you some answers. Once we've done that, we're gonna take a look at some of the data because we've got 100 days worth of data from this property now so we can see what they would have spent on energy had we not have put that system in how much they saved and any alterations anything we'd have done different so let's take a look at some of these comments adam cole 4808 has put sorry guys but this is really bad you don't even know the basics about air source heat pumps but decide to talk about them on youtube a 14 kilowatt heat pump does not draw 14 kilowatts of electricity the max output and electrical draw will be around three and a half kilowatts. So this was my error. I read the label, saw 14 kilowatts and assumed it was a 14 kilowatt demand, not a 14 kilowatt output. Adam, you were absolutely correct and I was totally wrong. 14 kilowatt is the maximum heat output and three and a half is about the maximum demand from the unit. Sorry. It's, it's more like eight, eight, eight kilowatts, isn't it? No, I have three. Three? Theoretically, because the, the fuse is, um... Is a 40, it has to be fused to a 40, right? I mean, this is, this is the problem. Well, it seemed like our good old boys were at a bit of an impasse. But I'll tell you what, this shined a light on a notion I'd been chewing on as of late. Seems to me that context is mighty important when discussing things such as input and output power. Three kilowatts ain't wrong, and neither is eight. And hell, under standard test conditions, this metal mama might have been pulling 13.8 amps. But you can't stake your steed on standard test conditions. Either way, there is one thing I can rest my hat on. And it's that anything over 40 amps would blow that fuse faster than a fox in a hen coop. Anyway, that's just my two cents. Let's get back to this dog and pony show. I feel like if you, if you were doing a review on, on the heat pump, you'd probably know that it's 35 amps, Ben. 40 amps max. Flip the breaker. That was the confusing bit, and I'm so sorry. Don't, don't apologize to me. Apologize to these I was people. on holiday having a good time, and I was like, what if you, you made a mistake? You made a mistake. Deron Galloway has put, I'd get Heat Geek to look at that heat pump setup. No way should it be pulling that much in an efficient home. So we don't actually know how much this air source heat pump was drawing. All we knew is that the customer was spending about a thousand pound a month on his entire electricity bill. Now we went round, looked at the air source heat pump, we looked at the air conditioning units, and we also noted that within this house, they had lots of other electrical appliances on top of the fact it's a pretty big house. Now, what we did do is refer them back to the team here at Heatable who are taking a look at the air source heat pump to see, can it be improved? Is it a setup issue or is that just what it's using? So the team at Heatable are taking a look at that. We do partner with Heat Geek also anyway. James Ripper, nice comment. Appreciate the Halo music. Editor has good taste. Shout out to Liam. Upside down fork, so another YouTube channel has mentioned the same sort of thing. So good solar install, but let's get someone to look at that poor homeowner's heat pump. Like I said, we designed a system to bring down the bill as low as we could. Now what we have is some data to demonstrate what we achieved when we installed this system because Tesla has an online cloud and what we have is all of the data. So that's it for the comments. Now there are as we speak today, 64 comments, some good, some bad. What I wanna say is I'm really sorry about getting that wrong with the air source heat pump. I'm gonna make an effort to learn more about air source heat pumps. I'm gonna try and involve some more of the Heatable team in the videos who can provide more accurate commentary. So let's move on to this Tesla data. So here is the Tesla dashboard. And at the top here, we've got some headline figures so this is 100 days worth of data so in that 100 day period the property used just under 11 mega hours of energy in the same period we generated 7.9 mega hours of solar and from the grid we brought in 6.39 mega hours 
of power. Now, why are those figures different? Because if the load was just under 11 megawatt hours and we produced just under 8 megawatt hours, why have we brought 6.39 in from the grid? Well, this all comes down to timings because on a solar system, you generate power and unless you consume it in that instance, either via going into a battery or via a load into the home, that power is then exported to the grid, which is why in the same period, we export 3.21 megawatt hours back to the grid. Now the batteries for the majority of this period were the two Tesla Powerwall 3s. One of the comments on the videos was why have you put such a small battery in? Well the customer had two Powerwall 3s when we installed the system back at the start of the year. What we then did is add expansion packs. Now the reason the property had two Powerwall 3s at the start and not the expansion packs was when we installed them the expansion packs weren't available so we've recently returned to install the expansion packs. So these figures are going to change when we look back again in another 100 days because we've got more battery capacity now. So what does this all add up to? Well I did some numbers earlier on and wrote them down. They are slightly different, fractionally different to what is on the screen now because the system is constantly refreshing in real time. So as you use power or as it is produced, these figures, every time I refresh the page, change. So I wrote them down earlier and I've got the maths. Now based on that we use 10.91 megawatt hours of energy, if we convert that into kilowatt hours, because that's what our bills are in, and we times it by the current energy rate, the customer would have spent £3,054 on their energy bill for that 100 day period. Now, in the same period, the customer brought in 6.39 megawatt hours of energy from the grid, but not all of that energy was at peak rates. And we can look at this in another page on the Tesla app. So what I can see is in the same period, from the 1st of March to the 9th of June, two megawatt hours of that energy was charged from the grid and we know we only ever charge the batteries when it's on a cheap overnight tariff so to do the maths for that what we do is we take 6390 kilowatt hours minus our 2000 kilowatt hours that's how much we actually bought from the grid at the higher rate so if we times that by the higher rate that is 1229 pounds so what that meant was we paid 1229 pounds for energy at the standard rate that's outside of these cheap windows but on the cheap rate we charged two megawatt hours at 140 pound which brought our total energy expenditure for the same period at 1369 pounds which is a lot less than the 3000 pounds he would have spent but we also now need to deduct what we got paid for export. So in that period, we exported 3.2 megawatt hours of energy. Now the current rate on the Octopus tariff, which this client is on, is getting 15 pence for export. So he would have earned 481 pounds in export money. Now what that means is his actual expenditure was only 887 pounds for the period, but, it's actually even better because if we take a look at the graphs, there was a period around the end of May when the system was down for 10 days. Now this was because they're having a pool put in the property and when they had the pool installed, they had to shut down the solar system while they were making all the connections. So for 10 days, we recorded load, but we didn't record a solar production. So using the current average, which is around 79, kilowatt hours of solar per day if we used it all we would have saved an additional 221 pounds now there's so many numbers here let's just summarize this this customer's energy bill even excluding the 10 days of downtime on this system came down by 71 percent so they've gone from spending what would have been over three thousand pounds in that period to 887 so our objective which was to reduce the customer's energy bill significantly has been achieved now what we will do is report again in another 100 days because now we've got expansion packs because although we exported 3.21 megawatt hours in that period it's now going to be less because we have extra capacity so as we produce solar if we're not using it for load and we now have additional storage capacity 
then we can start to deploy that back into the home and we can see this back on the other page because we've got a seven day overview here and what we can see is that the average daily discharge back to the home has been just under 46 kilowatt hours because they've got that additional capacity now they've also been averaging 67 kilowatt hours which is pretty impressive given the current weather has been terrible so they are way over their load they're still exporting to get some income and their grid dependency has dropped even further so let's check back in in another 100 days to see how this system has been performing Thanks for watching this video. Some really good data and some real life savings from a customer. Now, like I said before, I'm gonna make a conscious effort to learn more about air source heat pumps. I definitely won't make that mistake again with the output of power. But if you do want to watch a video where we installed an air source heat pump and a customer came in and shared his entire experiences with its performance and his savings, then there is a video linked on the screen here somewhere and you can watch that. It's a really interesting video Roger is a really great guy and a loyal customer of Heatable now we have lots more videos coming to the channel so if you want to stay tuned please don't forget to subscribe give this one a like if you liked it and we'll see you again soon